Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, in this episode, we're gonna take a look at the Emacs all-in-one kit for the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle. So if you buy this, you get this case, you get the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle FPV drone, it's inside. You get goggles, you get batteries, you get a charger, you get the controller, you get everything to get you going in the freestyle hobby. So let me show you what's inside. Now, as I'm opening this, let me just give you a little bit of backstory. So Emacs saw my videos on FPV for beginners and they said, hey, Steve, you know, it would be really great for beginners if we have an all-in-one kit. And well, this is the all-in-one kit. So they asked if I'd like it and uh, would I like to review it on my channel? So that's what I'm doing right now. They sent me this, finally getting around to review it. I will say, if you are someone who doesn't know if you want to get into the hobby, this is probably a good kit to get. You can use most of the components in here to keep you going in the hobby for a little while, but you will have to replace them with more pro items. But uh, to get you off the ground and see if you like it for under $200, I think the price for this is around $180 US, I think. You'll have to check the links below. But for all of that, you know, you can get off the ground and fly in no time at all. Now I've done a video on the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle and it is one of my favorite drones. So the fact that they made an all-in-one kit with the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle is pretty darn seriously cool. So this is my first time checking this out as well. So you know what I'm gonna do right now is since it's my first time and since I've been flying FPV for so long, the batteries, uh, I think I have some that are already charged, uh, but I'll take everything out and I'm gonna fly it right now just to show you how cool this is. But first off, let me show you what you get. First item would be goggles. These are your FPV goggles, and you will notice, well, let me take them out of the bag so I can show you. You'll notice that right on the top, it has two antennas, which is pretty sweet because two antennas is better than one. You can fly around a lot more obstacles, trees and whatever, and still get a signal. I don't know if it's true diversity. I'll have to check that out in the specs. It does, I can see the buttons on it. You do have your channels, your bands, so you can search through uh, very easy. Also looks like it has a focus right here. You see these things? You can pull that forward and backwards if it's blurry in your eyes. So if you wear glasses and you have a minor prescription, they might be okay. It is too small right here. If I pull the headband out, watch this. I'll put my head sideways. My glasses are not that large. You cannot put them over glasses. So if you're someone who wears glasses, you may not be able to use these unless you have a very minor prescription. And say you're wondering, well, I don't wear glasses and uh, I could definitely use these because they will fit on my head, then can I keep using these for all the drones I buy in the future? And the answer is yes, these will work with any drone you buy that's FPV. So there must be a battery in here to power the goggles, I think. Uh, there it is right here. Pretty sweet. It's an 18650 battery. That's the battery used to power radios. And uh, yeah, one comes with it. These are pretty expensive. 18650 batteries are very common in the RC hobby. They hold a charge for a very long time. So that's pretty sweet. And to charge this, you plug a USB cable into the bottom right here. And I see a USB cable in the package. So it's provided. Next, you would plug this end into the goggles. So let's do that now. Let's see what they look like. All right, I got the battery cable on top. Let me plug it in and see what I get in the screen. Do you see anything? Like, oh, I can see it on there, Emacs. All right, and of course I'll get snow because there's no drone connected right now. Squished away down here is the drone. This is the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle. It comes with a really good set of props. It is carbon fiber, so it's not plasticky. You cannot break this. It will not get damaged. I could fly it into my house and it'd still be perfectly fine. Camera's in the front. There's a lens cover over that. There's my antenna for my VTX, and there's my antenna back here for my receiver. And this little unit is where I'll plug in my two one-cell batteries. Two one-cell batteries are included in the kit. As well, you get a battery charger, and it can charge six of those batteries at the same time. So if you buy extra batteries, you can charge up six in no time at all, USB charging. You also get a complete set of spare props. And for some reason, they give you a bag of screws that are designed for the actual frame. So if you have to take the frame apart, you have more screws just in case you want to do something. You'll never use these. And as I mentioned, a USB cable is included. You also get a get started guide, which is really good because it tells you exactly what to do to get the drone going. And it even tells you how the joysticks work on the back. Finally, you get the controller with a little antenna, two switches, and let me take it out of the bag and show you. So if you stay in the FPV hobby, the first thing you're probably going to replace is this, because this is not a true radio. This is a very basic controller. It will probably work with all of the Emacs drones because Emacs uses a receiver on their drones. That's a D8 configuration. This is probably designed for a D8 configuration. So if you had this Emacs drone or another one or another one, you could probably, I don't know for sure, but you could probably use this remote for all of them. It comes as a mode two. That's why this here left joystick uh, goes all the way down and stays down and this one stays in the center that's a mode two you can see in the front here we have switches and that's three position yeah three three 
All right, so one's gonna be arm and the other's gonna be your modes. They also include trim controls, but in the FPV hobby, we don't use trim controls. But for some reason, beginners always play with the trim controls. They try to fly the drone like it's a GPS drone. Wrong. LED light there for when you're powered on or charging and your charging ports right back here. So let me power this on and try it out. First thing we do is take both batteries, strap them to the top. You're gonna to wanna charge up your batteries first, although they do come with power, but it's wise to charge them up first. These ones, I have a pile of these, so I have some fully charged ones here. I'm just testing out the video, so I'm not gonna hook up the controller yet. So I'm just gonna plug this in so that I power it on. There we go, get the sound happening. So take off the camera lens cover. Don't need that. We're all set to go. You see, we have little flashy lights all over this thing. So we have power. So I'm just gonna put this in one hand and I'm gonna hold up the goggles in the other. All right, so here we go. And I will tell you right now that Emacs already tuned the goggles to the channel of this drone. So you don't have to go search for the channel. It's already there. So you can see, I'll bring it close. You can see there's my video signal coming out of this drone. So as I move it around, look at me. I should be on there, look around my yard. And there, that's what you would see in your goggles when you're flying. I don't know, you can see that, any reflections. Yeah, pretty cool. It's a good video signal. All right, so I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm farsighted, which means I need glasses to see objects close, because if I take my glasses off, being farsighted means I can only see things far away. So for that reason, something close like this to my eyes is probably a little bit more difficult to see. So let me just try and see if I can see it in focus, even with these little focus things on the side. Let me try this. I get on my face and uh, no, 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 no. I could not fly with these at all. No, my prescription is too bad. So if you're like me and you're farsighted, you probably can't use these. But if you're nearsighted, have a minor prescription or no prescription at all, well then pfft, too easy, you can use these. All right, let's figure out what these switches do and take it for a flight. So power this on, it should have a beep. There we go, so it should be on. Next, what we wanna do is plug this in because uh, now that this is working, when you plug this in, it will automatically find this. So let's plug this in and we should get our little sound. There we go. All right, so that's plugged in. So let's put that down. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the mode. So I'm not sure what mode is what. So let me put all this down and uh, flick this up. That'll be the arm switch. There we go, so, uh, no, no, I'm not doing that. Whoa, that thing was dancing by itself. All right, so it's pretty easy to fly, so yeah, that's pretty level. That's beginner-ish. That is definitely easy for beginners. All right, so I'm flying this thing using the included little joysticky controller-y thing here, radio, and uh, yeah, that seems pretty easy to fly. All right, let's try a different mode to see, because uh, this one here with the switch all the way down is very beginner-ish. So that'd be perfect for someone just learning how to fly. So let's bring that back and switch modes over here. Let's see if I can land it on my hand. Let's see. I'll hit the arm switch and kill it. And there we go. So let's uh, switch modes. All right, so this time I'm going to take this switch and put it in the center and see what that mode is. Here we go. But... Okay, now I've got a little bit of, watch when I go side to side. I've got some, oh, I can do flips. Whoa, <laughs> killed it. All right, killed the arm switch. All right, so the center is kind of like a horizon mode, I think then. So that means then all the way up would be acro. So, ooh, don't fly in that mode. That's gonna be dangerous unless you know what you're doing. Let's try it. Okay, this would be acro, a lot of power. Okay, I'm going very light on it, but uh, yeah, that's acro. It's going everywhere because now it thinks that uh, you want to fly acro. This controller is not really good for acro. It's not responsive. I don't find it that responsive. All right, so my thoughts on the controller, just like I said from the beginning, you're not gonna keep this controller if you stay in the hobby because it's not very responsive if you wanna fly acro. Seemed like it was okay for like the beginner mode of angle mode and maybe horizon, but when I stuck it in acro, it was a little bit delayed. I'm moving the sticks and I'm used to instantaneous microseconds of movement exactly as I move. This has a bit of a delay on it, which is normal for beginners. But if you're in acro mode, you better be flying in a big field because if you move the joysticks a little bit and the drone starts to go this way and then you move it back, you might overcompensate and then it's all over the place. Now my backyard is pretty small, so I'm gonna try to fly this around my backyard, but I can't use the included goggles, so I'll use my Fat Shark goggles, and I can record the video from the camera inside the Fat Shark goggles, so here we go. I think we're all good. All right, so let's put on the Fat Sharks here, get that ready. I'm using this controller to fly it. The drone is sitting, <laughs> the, 
My little drone is right here. I'm putting it right in front of me because I, I feel pretty safe. All right, so here we go. You can see the drone is quite close to me because I'm still in the image. Look at that. Look at that. There's my hands. All right, so it's all set to go. Where's my controller? There it is. All right, so both switches are down. Hit this left switch up and that will arm it and then get ready to fly. Up and then here we go. There we go. Pass me so I don't give myself a haircut. And there's my backyard. All right, bringing it slow. So the image you see is what I see in my goggles. So this is recorded in my Fat Shark, so it's low quality. But there we go. I can fly around the backyard. I can fly fast, slow. And uh, there I am sitting down in front of the camera over my head without giving me a buzz cut. So for a beginner, you know, with this controller for the price, you save a lot of money and you get into it. Like I said, the only thing you're going to want to replace if you get this entire kit and you keep on flying FPV is this here controller in my hands. Yeah, do not keep using this if you're going to get into FPV. But as soon as you want to get into acro mode, you need a really good radio. A radio that is responsive. Let's see, I'm going to go outside my yard. Try not to kill myself. Let me go up, 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 up. There we are. Make sure nobody's down below. And come down so I don't hit the tree. So I got to slow it down or else I got to crash. And coming back, and I'll bring it over to me. There we go. I can't land on the table. Well, actually, I can land on the table. Where's the arm switch? There it is. <laughs> Did you hear that? That was right on the glass. <laughs> there it is right behind me. Wow. You know, I, I disarmed it about maybe a foot off the glass table. So clunk. So I'm going to put links below to where you can find this entire kit from Emacs. I believe the price is around 180 US. I could be wrong. Check out the links. See what the exact price is. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you watch my series on FPV for beginners, in that series, I show you all types of radios you want to buy, all types of goggles you want to buy, and all types of drones you want to buy. I will say this drone is in my series because I highly recommend this drone. It's a really, really good drone. So even if you're flying pro, this is a drone to have. So right off the bat, you're getting something really good. First thing you're going to change though, if you buy this kit and you get really good at flying FPV, you're going to change this. This here is not something you're going to use in the FPV hobby for long term. That's the first thing to go. Next thing you're going to get rid of is this. You're going to get rid of the goggles, even though you can keep them and keep on flying for a long time. But these antennas on top and this very, very tiny version is not going to give you the range. If you want to fly this far, your video is probably going to crap out before the telemetry on this is. So you'll probably want to get yourself some good goggles. But once again, to get you started in the hobby, it's not bad for the price because you're going to keep this. This and the batteries and the charger is what you're going to keep for years and years and years. So all in all, it's really decent. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't watched my videos on FPV for beginners, I'll put a link below so you can watch the first episode. There's 11 so far in the series as of the making of this video. And I'll have many more reviews of all types of FPV drones in the future. So stay tuned to this channel. Take care, catch you in the next video.